Hey, good evening, folks. Thanks for checking us out for another edition of PS. We are glad that you are with us. Uh, tonight, as my special guest, I have Ashton Owen. She is our newest staff member here at Wesley. She will be working with our children's ministry. She'll be working with children on Sunday morning, Wednesday evening, uh, with all of our special programs that we have for children. So we're really excited about having you here as our uh, youngest and newest <laughs> staff member. So you'll probably, you know, get some good natured fun from the other staff members <laughs> about that. Uh, you, you come from Maine yes. and you're, you're down here. You went to college at Lee. How did someone from Maine end up here in Cleveland, Tennessee? Well, there's not a lot of a lot of options in Maine for going into ministry, especially into an accredited vocational aspect. Like there's some Bible colleges, but mm -hmm. not like the full degree. And so I knew that I wanted to go into ministry and then I wanted a full bachelor's degree just as a backup. Great. <laughs> and so I had some family friends that went to Lee and they pushed me to check it out. And so I went my junior year of high school, mm -hmm. saw the campus, Loved it. It was the only school I applied to. And Excellent. I thankfully got it. <laughs> well, we're, we're thankful that you got in, and we're thankful that you're here with us. Uh, that's exciting. Uh, you're going to be married soon, and your husband is actually, or your fiancé, <laughs> is from Georgia. So, I mean, that that's uh, quite a thing to this main girl comes down here and meets somebody from Georgia. Oh, so. yeah. We did long distance the first yeah. summer that we dated. That's interesting. I went to Maine to college and met a Maine girl and married her. So, and I was living in Virginia at the time. So, uh, God works things in our lives in mysterious ways. Oh yeah. All right. Well, uh, you do work with our children, and so that means on most Sunday mornings you you can't really sit through a service. Uh, mm -hmm. You've got your own services with children to tend to. But you got to this last Sunday. It was Easter, and. Um, on Easter, we always have the children sit with their family. So you got to you got to listen to the message. And are there any uh, comments or questions or something that you might have to say about that? Um, I definitely appreciated that the sermon was well geared to the full congregation, not just our adults, but our teenagers and our youth and our kids in a way that they could understand. It wasn't like it was big concepts, but you made it easy for not even just kids, but new Christians to understand. So that well, was I had my eight year old granddaughter sitting in the front okay. row. So, you know, that <laughs> kind of kept me focused that I've got a wide audience. Oh yeah. And that's a good thing to remember. I think mm -hmm. sometimes we get too caught up in the big ideas that we're like, mm -hmm. we have to make sure that it makes sense. Right. Um, but with everything going on with COVID and how our world has become kids and young kids, especially have faced more loss mm -hmm. than they normally have. And so how would you explain the hope of a heavenly resurrection to kids that are facing that loss? It's a great question. Obviously, you have a heart for the children. Um, I think there's, there's several things that we want to keep in mind when we're talking to children about our heavenly hope. Uh, first off, um, heaven is a difficult concept for any age, mm -hmm. really. And um, so, you know, I have adults of from all different backgrounds that will want to talk about that from time to time. So I think it's important that we don't get frustrated with our children when we, uh, you know, talk about heaven or life after death or this hope that we have. I, we don't want to get frustrated with anybody because we have to trust that the Holy Spirit is working as well. And so really uh, we rely on the Holy Spirit. But let's, let's also remember we need to talk straight to our children. Um, I think when we adults say things like, well, the Lord called Granny home. Yeah, that's kind of scary for a little kid. Mm -hmm. What happens if he calls me home? <laughs> so I think we have to, but so we don't want to say something like, well, the Lord called Granny home, but we also want to be careful like, well, Granny got sick and she died. Mm -hmm. Well, then little Johnny gets sick, and little Johnny's freaking out because he figures that's what people do when they get sick. Mm -hmm. So we have to be uh, pretty straight and specific with our children. Certainly, we can talk to them about how fragile life is, uh, but, but we, are, uh, we have joy in our heart 
because we know Jesus and we know that Jesus has a place for us just as we would, just as I would with an adult in a Bible study class with children, we can use scripture. Mm -hmm. Now, <clears throat> you haven't been around here long enough to, to hear me say it, but I often uh, say, you know what the best translation of the Bible is? And they'll say, what? And I'll say, it's the one that you will read. Mm -hmm. So the children that can read, obviously, are going to be reading the children's translations. Mm -hmm. And I, I would hope that the children who can't read, we're reading them children's mm -hmm. translations. You know, we don't want to... The King James might be a little difficult mm -hmm. for a four-year-old to understand. So there are some wonderful children's ministries and even paraphrased adult uh, mm -hmm children's uh, translations, and even uh, adult translations that are paraphrased that I think uh, would be very beneficial when we want to talk to children about this. Mm -hmm. For example, in Revelation 21, uh, there's a famous verse where he will wipe away every tear and, and talking about heaven. And I, in, in the children's version I read one time, it basically said, uh, in heaven... God makes sure no one is sad and that no one mm -hmm. cries. And I think we can use that kind of language to talk to our children about heaven. Mm -hmm. um, what would you suggest? This is what you're <laughs> going to be doing with our children here. Yeah. I mean, I think one of the biggest things is to meet them where they're at. Age appropriate. Yeah. I know mm -hmm. like, a, well, even like a lot of people when they're mourning, the church comes out with like, well, they're in heaven. So like just rejoice mm -hmm. and so I think it's important to recognize that like the, the child like even if they do have like a amazing somehow perfect understanding of heaven <laughs> they're still going to be sad that their granny isn't sure. with them or that whoever isn't there mm -hmm. and so I think it's especially important to meet them in that and mm -hmm. just be like it's okay like I know you're sad and even like point back to scripture mm -hmm. of like Jesus morning Lazarus or like Mary morning Jesus. Very good. And how like, and even like when Jesus ascended into heaven and they were like, they understood more than they did when he died. They were still like, mm -hmm. man, like he's gone. Yeah. So I think just meeting them where they're at okay. and letting them process that grief. Mm -hmm. well, very good. The best place to start. Yeah. Thanks now so. as a parent, do you have any experience or examples of working through or like even kids that you've worked with? working through that mourning process with them? Mm -hmm. um, my sister uh, died of uh, ovarian cancer uh, right around her 50th birthday, so I still had children at home. Mm -hmm. And uh, my sister and I were very close. And so, but my children at that point weren't, mm -hmm. you know, uh, what we would call, uh, that would be in kids' ministries. But they were young teenagers. Mm -hmm. um, my granddaughter that was here Sunday she and her brother just lost a beloved pet just a week ago mm -hmm. and you know and that was really their first loss yeah and that can be difficult too and I think parents if, if you're watching if you if your children have not uh, been through the loss of a pet that's often the first time they experience some, oh, yeah. some thing someone close to them passing away um, so again, I think we, we recognize their age, but I, I, just as I do with adults, I think with children, we want to talk straight to them. Mm -hmm. When I say talk straight, I don't mean they've gone to heaven, okay? And we don't question that. That's mm -hmm. not what I mean. I, I think we, we really, I appreciate questions. And mm -hmm. I ask people in Bible study, whether they're present or watching, um, Send me your questions. And mm -hmm. I say this from the pulpit. Send me your questions. If our children aren't talking about their loss, mm -hmm. you may want to talk to them about it. Yeah. Because they've got questions. Oh, yeah. And so if they're quiet, talk to them. Well, and alongside that, it gets hard with just the blanket of like, they've gone to heaven, moved past it. Right. When it becomes a question of maybe they weren't following Jesus maybe they weren't a Christian and then just ignoring those and being like it's whatever the kids will bring that up even later in their faith mm -hmm. of when they're trying to understand the concepts of heaven they're like 
well, I heard this, but now I don't know what that means. Mm -hmm. So I think it is important to have age-appropriate open conversations. Sure. From the parent side, it's healthy for the kids to see the parents mourning appropriately too. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes parents get so focused on making sure their kids are okay mm -hmm. that they don't allow themselves to mourn healthily. Mm -hmm. So my grandfather passed when I was 10, and it was helpful to me for me to see my dad mourn that. Mm -hmm. And he still will like talk about it and share like healthy memories and good memories, but just mourning that loss and seeing like, it's okay mm -hmm. to have those feelings. Mm -hmm. So I think for parents, it's important to let yourself be in that too. Sure. Excellent. Well, very good. Well, what else, Ashton? Hmm. That's all I had. Well, that was pretty prepared. good. <laughs> That's all you had. Well, I'm, I'm kind of thankful. No, I'm just messing. Uh, very good. You, you seem to um, have a very good grasp of of this and, and of working with children, just in conversations that I've had with you before this point, um, I'm very thankful that you're here with us. So well, Thank you. I'm glad to be here. <laughs> Excellent. Y'all keep Ashton in your prayers as she goes about the ministry here uh, because she's going to be the one, even though she quizzed me today, she's going to be <laughs> the one that's going to be uh, talking with our children about subjects such as we spoke about oh, today. Oh, they come up with questions that you never think to ask. <laughs> well, that's great. That's great. And I, it is good. Uh, yeah. We, uh, I like a church that encourages questions, mm -hmm. and especially with our young folks. Just, just let them question. Mm -hmm. That's how they learn. Oh, it is. And that's how they grow. Yeah. Excellent. Folks, thanks for checking us out. Let's close with a word of prayer, shall we? Gracious God, we do give you thanks for your promise of everlasting life. And we thank you, Lord, for the grace that, that you have so freely offered us through Jesus Christ. And Lord, uh, let us all be aware that whether they're little children or they're our peers and colleagues, many people have questions uh, about life and death and life after death. And so we just pray, Lord, that we would have patience that we can uh, talk to these people and encourage them and pray with them and, and help guide them into the knowledge, the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus, for your love. Amen. Thank you, folks. Uh, see you next week.